Hey guys, how you doing today? Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, tips for beginner plant parents. I see, you know, so many, so many people going out and just buying loads and loads and loads of plants all at one time. And it, when you're first starting out, it's great because you see so many different plants that you like. Um, maybe you buy plants that maybe you don't even like, because, but they're popular. Um, which, <laughs> you know, to me is kind of crazy. So don't, don't fall into, number one is don't fall into the social media trap or the YouTube video trap and watch videos and then just run out and buy every plant that you see. And then you get them and you find out, you know, oh shoot, I don't have the right light or I don't have time to take care of this plant the way it needs to be taken care of. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is you know, do your research on a plant. If you like it and you see somebody that has the plant and you really like it, <clears throat> don't just go on a binge of finding that plant and then buying it. Research it and see what kind of light it needs. See what kind of environment it needs. And then figure out from there if you're going to be able to have the time and the space and the light for that particular plant that you want. Um, sometimes it's just not worth it, especially the prices of plants right now are insanely crazy. And if you're a first time plant mom and you're going out and say you're spending $30 on a plant and then another say $10 on shipping, there's $40 right there for a plant that you don't even really know if you can take care of or not properly. So just be careful of that. Don't don't get caught up in the social media um, gotta have it, gotta have it, gotta have it because everybody else has it or it's popular. Um, get, a, get a plant because you like it and get a plant that you know that you have the right things to take care of it. In other words, your lighting. Um, does the plant need to stay moist? Do you have time? Do you have a job? Do you have kids? Um, you know, are you going to be able to take care of that plant the way it needs to be taken care of? So keep that in mind. And start off with easier plants, number two. Um, once again, see if they're going to work for you. If you get an easier plant, like say, you know, a philodendron, a spider plant. Um, spider plants are very, very easy to take care of. They're very beautiful. They're easy. You know, stick with something like that. A Hoya. A Hoya is very easy to take care of. It doesn't need a whole lot of water. It doesn't take up a whole lot of time. Um, you just need to make sure you have bright light for that Hoya or for that spider plant. So that's number two. Try to start off with easy plants and see if you can accommodate what they need. Um, number three, I would say the biggest thing would be for a beginner plant person. Besides investigating your plant, and seeing what kind of care and get it off of more than one person, one website, one video. Watch several videos, read several articles about the plant because if you're living in the north and you're getting, um, say you're getting plant advice from somebody that lives in Florida, that's probably not going to work for you. The environments are totally different. And so get advice from somebody from several different people and try to put together where you live and 
the environment that you're going to be growing that plant in, it's going to make your life a lot easier. And with that goes, buy a moisture meter. I've heard a lot of people talking about moisture meters. I, I mean, I, I don't personally use one. Um, I've been growing plants for 40 years. I've never used one. I, I've never... I've looked at them. And my husband has said to me, oh, look at this, you should get, you should get this, and, well, I, I don't really find that I need one, but if you're a plant beginner and you feel like you're not going to be, be able to know when your plants need to be watered and you're not sure, buy a moisture meter. I mean, they run around $8. It's going to help you out a lot. It's going to help your plants out a lot. It's going to give you more confidence in taking care of your plants. <laughs> and you may not use it, you know, the whole the whole time. You may use it for a year, and then you'll get to know your plants, and maybe you won't need it no more. So that is my third tip: is know your plant, know your environment, and invest in a moisture meter. I think that would be a great thing for all beginner plant parents. Um. And number four, which I, I kind of touched on this on number three, don't listen to advice from a lot of different people. It, you need to find one person, whether it's on YouTube or um, like a gardening website that you love or um, somebody in your area or your state that has the same kind of environment that you do um, try to keep with one or two people. Don't don't run all over YouTube and watch 20 different videos and get 20 different sets of different advice and then go out and, you know, buy all different kind of crazy things that, that you don't need to grow plants. I mean, all you need to grow a plant is, first of all, you need the plant, you need a pot, and you need soil. You don't need a bunch of fancy soil. You don't need a bunch of fancy um, additives like bark and what have you. And I, I've seen so many crazy uh, additives that everybody adds to their soil. And as long as you've got a nice airy soil, I mean, you should be able to pick, get your pot, get your bag of soil, get your bag of perlite, and that should be good enough. You don't have to go out and spend tons and tons and tons of money on different things for your plants. It, it It's just not needed. It's really not. I mean, I'm not trying to be mean or, you know, say anything bad against anybody at all. Not by any means. I am just saying don't make raising plants and, and collecting plants turn into a chore and turn into a money pit. It doesn't have to be a money pit. Like I said, you need your plant, you need a pot, you need soil, and you need some perlite. That's really all you need to grow plants. Um, you don't need 50 million different kind of things to grow plants. Um, so try to stick to one person that you trust or two or three people that you trust and then take all that knowledge and put it into your own knowledge of your house, your light, and etc. Um, number five, don't buy every plant under the sun. And don't buy everything under the sun to grow plants. You, you just don't need it. You know, if, if you have a dark spot in your house and you want to put a plant there, yeah, you're going to have to get a grow light. Um, it doesn't have to be an expensive grow light. You can go out and buy an LED light and stick it in a lamp. You know, it doesn't have to be all these fancy spider lights and Mars Hydro lights or, you know, whatever. Uh, just don't buy everything under the sun right off the bat. Like I said, it's just another money pit that, that it doesn't need to be a money pit to grow plants. Um... Know your time schedule. You know, if you have a family with young children, 
and you have the animals and you have a job and you know your time limit. You know how much time are you going to be able to spend at least once or twice a week to take care of your plants or to walk around and look at your plants to make sure everything is okay. So just don't fall into that pit. Um, and number six I think is the biggest and most important advice really is don't go out and buy a whole bunch of different species of plants all at one time. Get to know, buy a few plants, get to know those plants, and get to know what, what works for you. And then move on, you know, to maybe a little bit more of what everybody calls a rare plant that needs a little more attention or you know, needs a little bit more whatever. Start out easier with easier plants and stick to, like say if you like succulents, stick with, get you a few succulents and go that route. Or if you like Hoyas, get a couple of Hoyas and see how those go for you. Or Pathos or, you know, whatever it is that is attracting you. Don't, don't go out and buy like six or seven different kind of different species that all need different things from you. Especially if you don't have the time for that. And always do your research on every plant that you want to buy. And do it before you buy the plant. It's so important that you know what kind of care it needs before you buy it. Um, you're, you're just, um, which goes right into number seven. You know, you, you've got to know what you're getting yourself into. Because if you get a plant say you like it and you, you get an anthurium and most anthuriums like to stay on the moist side so you're that's a plant that you're going to have to be checking it almost on a daily basis to make sure that plant is, is staying moist and it's in the right light and what have you um, and if you don't have time for that it, that plant probably isn't going to do good and it's going to turn it into a chore and growing plants shouldn't be a chore. Growing plants and having plants around us in our home should always be fun and not stressful and not breaking the bank because I, I've seen so many people and they go out and they just buy tons and tons and tons of plants and they're going broke and they're buying all the little soils and the bark and the vermiculite and the perlite and all these fancy pots and you know I, you're going to go broke really quick really really quickly you are going to go broke and then it's going to start a whole other well ball of wax because you, you're you know some you, we've got to still be able to pay our bills and you know, we have to eat, and our kids need clothes, and our dogs need dog food, and cat food, and, you know, I mean, it, it isn't about the amount of plants that you have. It's about the care that you're able to give them, and making your plants thrive when you do have, have them. So, keep that in mind. Um... You want to make sure that when you're getting a plant, it fits, you know, your your space as far as lighting and humidity. And if you have to go out and buy grow lights and a humidifier and all the special soil amendments that everybody talks about and, you know, all this other stuff, it is going to add up and it's going to add up quickly. First of all, plants aren't cheap anymore. They're very, very expensive. They're getting, as far as I'm concerned, they're getting ridiculously priced um, because everybody's going plant crazy. So, you know, if you're buying an expensive plant and then you're having to go out and buy a whole bunch of other amendments to take care of that plant, it's going to add up quick. I mean, before you know it, you're going to spend a hundred bucks or more. So just be careful of that. Do your research on your plant before you buy it, so you know what you need to give it. 
And number eight is time. How much time do you really have to take care of 10 plants, 20 plants, 40 plants, 100 plants, 200 plants? Do you really have the time after you've went out and binge bought, <laughs> you know, a hundred plants in a month or two. I mean, it's crazy. Buy a few plants, see if you like them, see how you do with them, and then go from there. I mean, don't don't go crazy, and that all goes back to social media. I mean, you, you can't get on social media every day and look at plants, or get on YouTube and look at plant shopping videos and plant unboxing videos and you see a plant and you're like, oh, oh my god, I gotta have that plant and you, you're just non-stop looking for it, looking for it. I mean, that's fine. I mean, I do it. Everybody does it. But when you're a beginner, I think you need to slow your roll a little bit and figure out what plants really work well for you in your space. And do you, do you have time to take care of eight different kinds of species of plants? And do you have the environment for those plants? Um, I know I don't because I only have so many south windows. And, you know, I can only have so many, so many highlight plants until my south window space is filled up. Or if I have a grow light and that those grow light spaces are filled up, I mean... Get to know your plants because I will guarantee you that within a few months, you're going to look at a few plants and go, geez, why did I buy that plant? I must have been crazy. I don't even like it, and I do it too. I've done it. I've been there. I have plants in my collection right now that I have fallen out of love with. But you know what? Guess what? You're stuck with them. And when you think about the money you've spent and the time you've put into those plants, whether it's a few months or a few years, I mean, I personally wouldn't just throw a plant out. I'm going to either try to give it to somebody or, you know, maybe try to sell it or, <laughs> you know, something. But figure out what species you like. Like me, I love philodendrons and I love anthuriums and I love begonias. And I love Ripsalis, and those are my four main top plants that I love. You know, do I have more species of plants? Yes, I do. I have more. But over the years, and I've been growing plants for 40 years, and I'm, you know, getting to the point where there's plants that I've had for years and years and years that I really don't want no more. I really don't care for them anymore because my tastes have grown over time. And I think that's what is important. Know your taste. Just don't go out and buy a plant because somebody else has it. And they think it's a popular plant. And Well, what good is buying a popular plant if you really don't like it? Or if you don't have the environment to grow that plant? I mean, if it's not going to do well for you and you don't have the time to take care of it, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. Get what you like, not what everybody else thinks is popular at the time. And number nine, buy healthy looking plants. When you're walking into the store, like seeing you're going to a garden center or you're walking into Lowe's or Walmart or wherever you're going to buy plants, and I know you can't do this online, you really can't, and you can't pick the plant up, you can't hold it, you can't look at it, you can't pop it out of its pot and look at its roots. I mean, you're... You're kind of stuck. You're buying a plant online that all you can see is a couple of pictures that the grower or the seller is putting up, and you're taking a chance. But, um, you know, when you're in a store and you're looking up plants and you see one that you like, look at it and make sure, first of all, does it look healthy at first sight? And then look for bugs. Pull the leaves. Look underneath the leaves. Check everything. Check up under everything. Look at it. Feel it. Um, you know, make sure it looks healthy. I mean, a couple of a yellowing leaves doesn't mean nothing because plants do that. Plants, their old leaves die and new ones grow back. It's the way of life. It's kind of like our hair. You know, 
our hair gets cut, our hair falls out, new hair grows back. Well, <laughs> if you're if you're lucky, it'll grow back. Um, that's what plants do. That's the nature of the plant. I hear so many people freak out. Oh my God, I've got yellow leaves on my plant. What should I do? Well, don't freak out. Why are you freaking out? Plants, leaves die. You know, I mean, as long as you don't have the whole plant leaves going crazy all at one time, the plant will be fine. You know, but check them at the store. Look at the leaves. Turn them upside down. Look at them. You know, take a plant and, like, say this one. Say I walked into a store and I seen this plant. And I'm like, oh, man, this is so cute. I really, really like it. You know, and I'm looking at it. All the leaves look really nice. It looks healthy. It's really pretty. It's bushy. But there's one other thing that might be really important that you might miss. You know what? Take that plant. Look at the bottom. Do you see a bunch of roots coming out of it? If you see a bunch of roots coming out of it, you know that's probably a pretty healthy plant. But if you can't see the roots, guess what? Squeeze that pot. Pull it out real quick. Do you see a lot of nice healthy roots on it? Yep. Great. Pop her back in. Put it down on the cart if that's the plant you really want and take it home. You know you've got a nice healthy plant. And you know what? I've done that. Oh, I got perlite in the top of my succulent <laughs> from tipping that plant over. But you know what? I've done that a million times and my husband's always like, oh my god, what are you doing? Well, I'm not going to spend whether it's three dollars or twenty dollars on a plant. I want to see its root system. That's the last thing that I want to look at before I put that in my cart and take it home. Because your plant, this plant can look perfectly nice and you could get it home and it could have all rotten roots or it could be, it could have um, some kind of diseased roots in, in there. I mean, you don't know unless you're looking at it. And even though you're looking at it and you're checking it out really well and you're popping it out of its pot and looking at it, I mean, you could bring it home and a week later you start having a whole bunch of issues with it. There could still be suck bar with it. So no matter what you do to make sure you're getting a healthy plant, really don't mean nothing in the long run because but at least you know you you have done your due diligence and you've checked that plant out thoroughly before you put it in your cart and bought it and brought it home. And um, I know that's hard to do when you're buying plants online. I personally have bought a lot of plants online and I have been thoroughly disappointed with what I get. And it, it, it's very disheartening to get a plant and when it gets to you it looks like crap or they're telling you, oh, it's a four inch pot or a two inch pot and you get it, you get it and you unpot it to look at it and all it is is a couple of cuttings stuck in a pot. I mean, <clears throat> what can you do? Well, you can't really do a lot. Yeah, you can leave or you can talk to the seller. Maybe he can, you know, try to fix it in some way. You can leave a bad review. Um, so hopefully other people don't buy from a seller if it's a bad seller. And that's another, not, another thing with buying plants online. Always read the reviews on people's um, comment section from other people that have bought plants for them, from them. That's really important. Um, so that that's that tip. Check your plants out before you buy them and make sure you're buying a healthy plant. Pretty easy. Because if you don't, it'll mean disappointment and it may not be your fault if the plant dies. You know, because it could just be a sick plant. <clears throat> and number 10, which is my very last, and then I'm going to shut up and get off your get off your back about it but have fun with your plants when you get them you know I mean don't freak out and it, because your plant you know you get a plant and it starts getting a couple of yellow leaves you know don't don't freak out about it and just 
go with a flow. I mean, if you're if you're getting one or two yellowing leaves on a plant, no big deal. Don't freak out about it. Snip it off, pinch it off, throw it in the trash. It's going to grow a new one. Sooner or later, it's going to grow a new one. So don't freak out about your plants when you get them. Do your research, figure out the plant, try to do your best with it, and learn about it. I think that is the most important thing, is learning about every plant that you buy. You know, I've had people, like this Ripsalis plant. I've had people, I've watched videos about other people trying to tell other people, um, trying to tell how to take care of, of a Ripsalis plant. And they're saying, oh yeah, it's a cactus, let it dry all the way down and then water it and blah blah blah. No, that is wrong. That is wrong, wrong, wrong. A Ripsalis is a cactus, but it's not a desert cactus. Ripsalis usually come from rainforest, which means they're getting rain and moisture all the time. They like to be kept on the moist side, not soaking wet, you know, not sitting in a puddle, but moist. Let it dry down about halfway and water it. Where a desert cactus, on the other hand, or even a succulent, those like to dry down all the way. And then, you know, wait a couple of days and then water it. You know, I, I see so much bad advice about plants on YouTube and even reading on websites. That's why I'm saying do your due diligence and listen to more than one video and, and really take to heart everything that you're reading and the videos that you're watching and make sure that you're listening to somebody that you trust. You don't want to get on and watch a video and say, oh, like say, I just unboxed this plant and I'm going to sit here and tell you all about how to take care of it. Or I've had this plant for a month and I'm going to tell you all about how to take care of it. You, you want to know, you know, for quite some time, at least like a year on how to take care of a plant. Because you could take care of a plant for six months and it does great and then all of a sudden it fails. Well, why? Why did that plant fail? Was it a sick plant? Was it something that... I did or didn't do, um, you know, did I have the wrong kind of soil, did I take the wrong advice and not take care of it correctly and thought that like a ripsalis, you got to let it keep drying down and let it get bone dry and when the plant does not like to be treated like that, you know, I mean, just be careful who you're listening to and what you're reading and make sure that you're doing the right thing for the plant. Read three or four different websites about a plant. Listen to three or four YouTubers on a plant and try to figure out, listen to how long they've had that plant or how long they've been plant people or, you know, because <clears throat> even as an old plant grower, you know, I could have a new plant and, and not know nothing about that plant. But, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be the kind of person, though, that I'm going to tell you, okay, I've never grown this plant before, I don't know nothing about it, but, you know, I'm going to learn, and I'm going to try to figure it out. And then I'm going to try to pass on what I know and what is working for me, but even though something is working for me, it may not work for you. Like I said, you're, if you're listening, if you live in, say, Ohio, and you're listening to plant advice from somebody that lives in Florida, that plant probably isn't going to work for you. It, taking care of it the same way that somebody in Florida would take care of it, because the environments are so totally different. You know, so just be careful. Have fun with your plants. Don't go out and go crazy and buy, you know, 50 or 100 plants all in one shot. Take your time. And really get plants that you love and do your research on them before you buy them and I think that you will enjoy your plants a whole lot more and don't overspend I know if you're a new plant person 
and you're just starting out buying plants, you don't really know what plants are going to cost or what they should cost. But don't go out and spend a whole lot of money on one plant until you know if you can take care of it properly or not. Um, that's all I'm saying. Just have fun, be careful, and don't go overboard. Because if you're like me, you're going to end up and only like a few different kind of species of plants and stick with those for a while and then go on to a little bit more challenging plants. I, I think it will help you grow as a plant person and it will take stress off of you if you're sticking with a little bit more. There's so many beautiful common plants that you can walk into any store and buy that are so pretty and you know you don't have to break your <laughs> break your bank to have beautiful plants all plants are beautiful and um, they all have different growing habits and I think if you find the easiest one for you for your lifestyle that will make you a better plant parent right there so Alright guys, I am going to let you go and I will talk to you later. I hope my advice helps some newer plant parents or even some older ones because I've done the same thing. I, I'm an old plant mom and I have gone out and made big mistakes on buying plants that I, uh, some, I, I have a few that I look at and I think, oh geez, why did I buy that plant? I must be crazy from buying that plant. <laughs> But you know what? It happens. So, alright guys, you have a great day and I will talk to you later. Bye. Peace.